Okay, I'm going to uh, make a, this is going to be a new video um, about something that people ask me a lot about, which is fitting. Um, uh, one of my favorite Seiko bracelets to different models. People ask me about it a lot. Um, and that is the super famous, or at least the one that people know about, the Seiko H-Link. There it is right there on my upside down true poke. So anyway, there's the true poke in all of its glory. But this is the H-Link. Seiko produced this, started producing this in the late 1960s, so it's a it's a 60s design. Um, and it's pretty cool. Seiko used a versions of this on a bunch of different watches. And so as a result, um, they're relatively easy to find. Um, and there's a, there's a couple things about them that is really cool. Um, things I like about them. Because, now this is something that people sometimes sniff a little bit, they're made of folded link, they're not solid stainless steel. One of the things that's nice about the folded link is that, I, for me personally, I find it, um, it's it's really, it's flexible and has some give to it. And yeah, it, it sounds, people say, oh, it sounds kind of tinny. Um, I, I actually, I don't mind the way it sounds, but I'm used to it. But the, the sort of the, the lightness and thinness of it makes it extremely wearable. And as, as I always say, I'm just not a fan of big, fat, wide straps. I'm just I just don't like them. Um, they make me feel like my wrist is suffocating. So this nice thinness really works pretty well uh, from my perspective. And so over the course of time, oh, oh, I should back up. There are two original versions of the H-Link. There's this, which is the standard American H-Link, and I'm gonna we're gonna break, and I'll I'll go over here and I'll show them more clearly. There's the standard American H-Link, which is sort of thin, and then there was another version which was made by Stellux. Uh, and Stellux, the Stellux versions of Seiko's bracelets were always more, um, a little beefier, a little better made. Uh, and that was certainly the tr the case here. And that's the Stellux bracelet right here that I have custom fitted to my my uh, Jumbo. My 6138 3009 Jumbo. Uh, because I just think it's a great, great piece. Now there are modern versions of the H-Link. There's, um, uh, there's some made in the Philippines, and they're okay. I mean, the, the shape isn't bad, and they're folded metal, uh, and so they kind of have the same feel as the original. They're not, they're not bad. They get some of the basic details wrong. Um, the first person to really come up with uh, a uh, a modern recreation of the of the H Link was uh, Jonathan Koch. There's Jonathan right there. Uh, and he recreated it in solid stainless steel. His company, East Tech, made them. Sadly, the knowledge of where he had these made passed. No one knows. I was able to get his crystals. We were able to get his crystals. That knowledge was not lost. But where he had these made, nobody knows. And that his laptop died a few weeks before he did, and all that information was gone. And because he was so cagey about giving up his sources, it went to the grave with him. But he made a solid stainless version of not the American Seiko thinner version, he made a solid stainless version of the Stellux. And again, I'll, I'll show that to you here in just a second. Um, I just I just think they're fantastic. So uh, I'll come back in just a little bit here. We're going to break. I'm going to go to the to the bench and we'll talk. I'll show you the different bracelets and talk about things that I do. And then we'll come back here and sort of recap. Okay, let me stop this. Okay, so talking about the H-Link. And again, the, the first the first, you know, sort of example I always like to use is the, is that of the, the Pogue. I'm trying to get better light here. It's kind of snowing outside. Anyway, so this is the standard, gosh darn it, terrible light. This is the stand, this is the standard Seiko made 6139 6000X. H link. You can see that it's sort of thin and it's folded link. It's got a little bit of curve to the links, but not a, not a ton. And then we get to Stellux. This is Stellux here. Gosh darn it. So we've got that. I don't know if you can really I'm trying to get these to nest together. I don't know if you can really see. So you've got the Seiko there, the standard North American Seiko, and then the Stellux here. You can see this is thicker and it's more curved. Again, Seiko used Stellux or sort of the higher end bracelets. Uh, Seiko loved the H-Link. They used it in all kinds of different bracelets, versions, versions of the of the 
of the H-Link used in different ways. So it's a very, it's a very classic um, 70s, 60s style bracelet, and many, many imitators were made. Um, it Because it's a 60s bracelet, um, it works very well in other models of watches. Uh, one of them, well, let me go back a little bit. Let's talk about the 6309 Diver, and we can talk about the 6105 Diver. So hang on just one second. Uh, where is my 6309? Where in the heck did I put the darn thing? I know I grabbed it. I know I grabbed it. Well, hang on, I have to do with one of the reissues. Okay. So in the late 1960s, Seiko designed the 6138-001X um, Yachtman, which has this beautiful geometry on this case. It's a late 60s design, and it's super cool. Uh, Seiko went, and they then they had the they had the the slim case 6105, which is like a early that's like a 60s style case. But then they they jumped to the 6105-8110 which has a little bit of that, but it's a little stretched. But then they came out with it. Where in the heck is my 6309? I know I brought the darn thing downstairs. Where the heck is it? Well, it's somewhere, anyway. But since I don't have that, we'll talk about my SRP, because that's the reissue. So this is the SRP 775. And what's cool about this, even though this is a modern brace, modern watch with 22 millimeters versus this uh, 18 and 19, um, if you get the end links, this this sixties shape comes clear, and you can really see once you add you know metal between the lugs. All of a sudden, you can see a real hint of the lineage of where this comes from. So you have a watch, you know that the original of these, the sixty three hundred six and sixty three hundred nine, they were designed in probably nineteen seventy five, released in nineteen seventy six for the sixty three hundred six. But having a 60s bracelet actually works really well because the case outline is actually kind of 60s. So for me, it actually it works really well. And again, I'm not a big fan of anything thick or wide. So having these is just, is just the way, way to go. Now, you'll notice this doesn't have an H-link on it. This is one of the times when Seiko actually, Seiko is very good with their bracelets. This is one of the times when Seiko, uh, they really, they got bracelets. They almost always got bracelets right in my opinion. It's rare for them to get them wrong. So they didn't put this on an H-Link, though there was a version of the H-Link that the JDM had, and it looked like a standard H-Link, except these middle links were backwards, and so you could see the little rollover on each side. Still, though, it's it's pretty neat. You could, and, you know, putting older-style bracelets on more modern watches happens pretty regularly. This is a 54 Fathoms, 55 Fathoms, or whatever the heck it is. And I put, this is a, uh, this is a 6309 bracelet in sort of an H-link pattern uh, that I put on. And I think that actually looks really nice. And again, because the taper follows the case. I think that's pretty neat. And that's pretty cool. Um, again, we're talking about these designs too. Uh, though sometimes Seiko, in my opinion, does get it wrong. The correct original bracelet for this watch, hang on a second. I'll dig one out. I should have gotten it out before, but I didn't. Hang on, I'm looking in my project's drawer. Oh, come on, where did I put it? Where is it? I should have planned ahead. Hang on just one second for me. Aha, here it is. Okay, so this watch has the correct original bracelet on it. I mean, granted, it's a little beat up, but... Uh, let's see here. So that's what it came on, and for me, it sort of... It sort of breaks up the line. I mean, it looks okay. I mean, it's a pretty neat looking watch, but I actually, I, I think this is one of the few cases, at least for me, where the H-Link would have done a better job. Um, this is a later model Stellux Taper. So it's not the straight H-Link, it's the Taper H-Link. And with these end pieces in here, it drops right in together. And for me, again, because it follows the form of the case, I think it's actually better suited. I just think it's a really, really, really classy bracelet type. Yeah, this is a Stellux, Stellux H-Link taper. It used to be you could find these pretty easily, these these bracelets, and rework them, but uh, it's not really happening anymore. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Oh, that's because I had it stopped. Silly me. Gosh, what a great watch. 
these jumbos are a beautiful, beautiful, timeless watch. Why don't I wear this more often? Anyway, so I just think it's kind of an improvement, me personally. This watch is available, by the way. If somebody is interested in one of these, this watch is available. Contact me. Okay. Yeah, because having the right bracelet, for the most part, is really important. Just a, an example, I mean, this Mark IV Omega has its original bracelet in it. The bracelet was designed to be part of the whole thing. It's really important. When you don't have these on the correct bracelet, it just there's something about it just feels off to me. But anyway, so these H-Links really do work. So I'm going to do something fun right here. I'm going to find... Um, I'm going to find my head is what I'm going to do. I have this on leather because I think it's really comfortable. This is my my daily driver 6105. It's a sleeper. Underneath the hood, this is a... Um, it's an upgunned, upjeweled... Gosh darn it. Upgunned, upjeweled uh, version of a 61... Uh, of the 6309 movement. So this has... This has a 6319 21 joule movement in it that I have upgraded with... Um, I have upgraded with Arbor Jewels top and bottom, and also a very rare 6306 hacking lever. Sorry, I'm busy trying to get this off here. And so it makes it, it makes it really nice. Hang on just one second, there we go. Okay, so now we've got this watch. So you saw what it looked like on leather, and of course you know what it looks like on a, on a strap. He's on the standard waffle, that's what those look like. But again, I think this case really works beautifully with an H-Link. Now, this is one of Jonathan's. This is, I've had this, isn't this one of Jonathan's? Wait, where are the M-Links? Did I grab the wrong? Oh, I grabbed the wrong thing. It's a Stellux straight with a bar end. I forgot I even had this. Hmm, I should find something and put this on it. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know I had that. I'd forgotten. I thought this was something else. Hmm, straight M-Links. Straight bar ends, something with hooded lugs. Hmm, I'm gonna put that to one side and think about that. Okay, now let's open this up. This is one of Jonathan's. And I've had this, I've had this particular bracelet for so long, it might even be one of the first ones I ever bought from Jonathan back in the day. So there we go. Let's see what we get done here. So you can see there it says East Tech. And there's Jonathan's stuff. Now remember, there's somebody today trading on the East Tech name, but it's not Jonathan. It's not, and if it's his stuff, it's stuff left over from his estate. No new things are being made. And if they are, they're not Jonathan's. They aren't real. Okay, so let's snap this in and let's see how it looks. Come on. Get in there. There's that one. Now, there is a modern version of the solid stainless H-Link being made uh, by Larry Boulinet of Uncle Seiko, and I'm sure I've talked about him a lot, so you all should know who he is. And so he has, I've endlessly bugged him to set up a, uh, a, a basically a pre-made line of, crystal, of uh, bracelet setups like this to do a 6309 or 6105 or anything else like that. These are the special fat bars. They're a thin body, but they have the fat tips and he has those. So if you talk to him, you can get those and it's great because it makes it so it's not rattly. Isn't that something? Isn't that nice? And the H-Link? See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Isn't that beautiful? That's just so classy. And again, and it shows that lineage, that lineage of that particular case shape, of course with the added crown guard, but I just think that's pretty neat. I think that's beautiful. Anyway, so that's kind of kind of talking about the H-Links and fitting into new things, and I think they ought to be used a lot more because they work so well on so many different model watches, and I, I just think they're, 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 they're classic looking, and they fit really well, and they're comfortable, and all that, all that happy stuff. Okay, so I'm going to break and we're going to go back over there and talk some more. Anyway, so there we go. One of my favorite bracelets and I get to talk about it, which is nice. Um, I just, I just think there's, there's, it's just, it's just a classy, classy mix and it just looks so nice and it fits so beautifully on these, this gorgeous case. 
it just it's a it's a perfect complement. I mean, even the sh the shape of the links is reminiscent of the shape of the side of the watch. It just, it's just so simple and so classy. Uh, it's just a in my mind, it was a, it's just a perfect fit. Um, that's really about it. Uh, just sort of a follow up note for fun. Uh, in my video the other day, I was saying, oh, I didn't have any pictures of my scooter. Uh, I've been cleaning out the garage and uh, getting finding all this old junk and old letters and stuff from old people that I don't know anymore. But I found a lot of pictures of my scooter. Anyway, I thought I'd show it off. I owned like 15 Vespas, but this was my first, and it was my greatest love. And I'm so sorry that I sold it. I wish I still had it. My 1974 Rally 200. I I, I used to commute on this bike. I, I rode this bike everywhere. Guy in Connecticut bought it. I'd love to have it back though. I dread to think how much it would cost. And like I say, I'm, I've always been about two-tone. So there it is. I made this bike two-tone. I did everything. I had a custom seat made and all that other kind of stuff. It was really awesome. I also found pictures of my P200, my, what, the, the last Vespa I ever owned, my P200. And that was a nice bike. I, uh, I got this from a guy. He was having a yard sale on Lower Haight Street in San Francisco. Like he opened up his garage and I was going by on a scooter and this was sitting inside and it was, it looked terrible. Uh, but it cleaned up really nicely. Yeah, it was this bike was fast. You wouldn't think a Vespa is fast. Who this thing haul? Like, I could do like 85, 90 on this thing. 10 inch wheels, isn't that crazy? Anyway, that's really that's about it. And uh, so, thank you for watching the video about uh, about uh, bracelets. And if you have any questions, let me know. And talk to Larry. See if we can get that done.